It was a whole mozzarella, round and white and slippy. And it lay between the man and the woman like some silken thing that together they had just spun. They petted over it, peeling layers and slowly feeding each other. My date complained that I didn't look at him while he spoke. He must have been used to better attention. But I couldn't stop watching the other couple, gazing at each other as they skinned the moon. Thank you. Now, those were fragments of the pieces uh, that were commissioned. And so you can go onto the Edinburgh Book Festival website and read the pieces in their entirety. But you'll see how, you'll, you've just seen how very different, uh, differently that you've interpreted the brief. Can you just each tell me about how you came back to your ideas about what to write about? Do want, Roger, do you want to start? Sure. Um, uh, I got asked to do... Um, this whilst I was visiting my dad, who lives in Hong Kong half the time. And um, so Hong Kong seemed like kind of a smart place to write about. Uh, and so uh, at the end of each day, when we'd come back from touring around and looking at whatever we were looking at, I would sit in the room for a few hours and, um, and put this out. And I've been trying in recent, I've had a few commissions recently I've been fortunate enough to have, and trying to use it as an opportunity to change the way that I write. Um, for my first couple of books, I always thought that I could be good, but I was a little polite, and anything that was dangerous or possibly offensive, I avoided, because I'm generally quite needy and overly emotional, and I want people to like me. So naturally that affected the work, in which I didn't want to do anything that, I mean, there were beautiful sentences, but not much happened, and, uh, and I was kind of afraid of um, doing anything that might be slightly risky. So these recent short stories have been a real opportunity for me to try and do something that's a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more involved, and to take something from a fragment of my own life and then to transform it and do it in a completely different way. And how about setting something? I mean, most of your work is set in the UK, and this was you obviously used this opportunity to set it, you know, far away. Um, well, it, it just so happened that I'd written a couple of recent short stories also in other places. Part of the, um, one of the fortunate things uh, about what I've done as a writer in the last few years is that I've been asked to go places, places that I would never usually be at and would never even think to go to and don't know anything about. And so these occasional short stories have started popping up set in other places. And so I quite like to do a series of them and this seems to fit in with, there was one, uh, there's one set on a Bulgarian stag weekend uh, and um, several others in the works. So this I see it very much as part of that new strands so it didn't feel too much different because each of these recent short stories have been about loners set in other places of which I know little mm. I suppose. And Jen what about you? I mean you've, you've chosen to write prose mm. rather than poetry. Was that an obvious decision as soon as you saw the brief? No there's, a, there's another elsewhere for me actually I find it um, I, I, I was quite um, intimidated by this project there's a certain responsibility that goes along with the commission as well which is um, alarming but I, I quite like the being alarmed you know I think it's, it's quite good for you as a writer um, as, as a poet I have always been most comfortable writing about where I am whether that's home or not it's I find it very hard to, to think of sending my imagination out elsewhere away from me um, because I don't feel like I'm much in control of the act of writing something really as, as I've sort of suggested in that reading that it, um, it, it is something that comes from elsewhere itself but you can't necessarily choose for that to happen so I was very worried about whether this would come off or not but I started off um, I realized I was about to try and cheat and I kind of talked myself out of that cheat in what way I was Going, my first idea was to write, um, I've, I've been getting quite interested in the early people in Shetland, and I thought, if I write something set right where I live, but about the early people, is that elsewhere or is that not elsewhere? Given that it's not, for example, Scotland at that point in its history, you know, Scotland was, um, Shetland was owned by Scotland relatively late on in its history, 
So I wondered if I would get away with that, and I, and I sort of caught, I caught myself out at what I was doing there. I was trying to stay where I was safe, you know. Um, so I, I cast my mind back to um, my trip to Mexico, um, which was a, a couple of years ago, and I, and I went with the intention of researching this art project, which I began to describe in the excerpt. Um, but I never felt that I was... I never felt that I'd articulated what I'd experienced in Mexico, and that I never felt that I'd gone as far as I wanted to with it. So I thought, right, this is this is maybe my opportunity now. You know, and I'll try and be honest about what it was like to be in Mexico and to be ashamed of who I was, and to be so at odds with a language and have to to take risks in language in terms of just communicating with people. And you started off by saying this is not a story. Yeah. What is it? What would you? I mean, it was, you, know, you start off. It's almost like a creed about poetry. I'm not really able to. Um, I work in a variety of media, by dabbling, you might say. <laughs> in some ways, it'd be good if I stuck to one thing, but um, I'm never able to separate out the various media from each other. I feel like I have one task at a particular time, and it, it might be happening. And, prose or, or poetry or porcelain, but the concerns for me are always the same, actually, regardless of which medium I'm in, mm. with varying degrees of success. Um, as for what it is, um, it's not something I normally say. Whenever I, I read or I'm asked questions about my work, I say, this is fiction. It's, it's poetry. It may involve something that has happened to me, but this is fiction, because as soon as you start doing what's best for the piece of writing, rather than being true to exactly what happened to you, something becomes fictional. Um, but I still don't think it's a story, actually. <laughs> it's a, a creed, I think, yeah. would, be, would be the thing. And that is my concern at the moment, is to work out how to write and why to write, mm. I think, probably. Let's come back to that. But in the meantime, Eleanor, what about your piece? Where um, did that come from? Initially, when... Am I switched on? Yeah. Yeah. Initially, I thought uh, I should write something as far away from Scotland as possible, and my husband suggested space because he's quite into astronomy, <laughs> and I did think about that for a while, but couldn't really come up with anything. And and then I thought, well, the furthest I've ev ever been is Malaysia. I went to Malaysia when I was 11 uh, with my mum, and so for for a few weeks I, I was thinking about doing a, a piece on Malaysia, and it was quite an unusual holiday. We'd gone round prisons and. Um, she, she was working out there for the UN, so we'd gone around drug rehabilitation centres and prisons, and I had a diary that I'd kept, and my mum had kept a diary. And the day I sat down to start doing some research and writing, I realised that these diaries were up in the attic, and we have one of those really lethal loft ladders that just sort of slices uh, and slices its way down, and it had nearly taken my husband's finger off about a week before, and I was seven months pregnant, so that idea was put to bed and then I just thought well you know I spent a lot of time in Italy and uh, this this one particular family kind of stood out um, and I had written about them at the time um, I'd written a letter to my mum which I didn't have anymore but I think when you write things down you, you remember them a lot better so it was still very vivid um, so that that was it and I just sat down and wrote it really. So that it does have quite strong autobiographical elements. Mine then, one your, does, yeah. yeah. Yeah, not the whole thing. I did, I did play around with it, but um, large parts of it are true. Yeah. I think w with a commission, you just mentioned the responsibility of a commission. Do you like to be a commissioned? I'm grateful to be commissioned, and I find it hard to say no to offers of work. Um, as for like, I, I think I'm, I'm intimidated generally, but um, as I say, I think it's quite a healthy t intimidation. I'm, I'm grateful to be asked to do what um, I feel most at home doing, I suppose that's the way I express it. What about you, Rog? Would that piece have existed without a commission? No.